Next, eighth question. Critically examine the concept of social stratification as a basis for sustaining social inequality. Now, they are simply asking you about four different approaches to social stratification. I don't know how many of you would have seen 2019 question paper. If you look at 2019 question paper, there was categorical question which was seen to be asked with respect to approaches to social stratification. Now, in that context, I have various approaches to social stratification. One is in the context of the functional approach which was given by Talcott Parson. The second is davis murray hypothesis. The third approach that you see in the context of social stratification is the Marxist perspective. The fourth one is Weberian understanding and the fifth one is a symbolic interactionism. Now in fact all of these five different approaches which are seen to be existing that is be it the davis murray hypothesis or be it with respect to the dimensions of talcott parson or be it with respect to marxist or weberian or the symbolic interactionism all of them categorically say that social stratification has emerged to maintain the social order because there is social inequality that is what is the core philosophy that is seen in the context of these dimensions right so all those five perspectives if you are able to write that that is what is a critical examination because Marxist criticizes Weberian, Weberian criticizes Marxist because Marxist fundamentally focuses only upon the economic resources but whereas Weberian categorically talks about the power, the status and the resources. So different dimensions are seen. Next, describe the genetics and inheritance pattern of ABO and RH blood group in man. Now they are categorically asking you about 9.6. Right? They are also asking you about the nature of dominance and recessive nature. I know that O is recessive, AB is dominant, RH negative is recessive, RH positive is dominant. Right? So this is one dimension which is seen to be existing and this is one dimension which is observed to be existing. And you will also have to put in some Punnett square which is existing. One example that you will have to put with respect to Punnett square. Maybe take either AO and BO. It is easy to explain both. Now I see AB is 1, AO is 1, BO is 1, OO is 1. I have all four blood groups in this. Right? I have all four blood groups in this because I know that O is recessive, A is dominant. That means if it is a combination of AO, it is A blood group. If it is BO, it is B blood group. Now in this context, I can show an exception also. AB is co-dominance. AB is co-dominance, AO is dominance, BO is dominance and OO is Fundamentally, if a recessive character is supposed to be expressed, I need a homozygous condition. I need a homozygous condition to be seen whenever I observe this. Whenever I observe this, recessive trait to be existing. So, discuss about that dimension, Rh positive and Rh negative. Discuss about that. Will you leave it there? You will also have to talk about what is the significance of this. Now, when you look at the significance, the major significance of this is what? Paternity diagnosis, right? Although I use AB blood group in paternity diagnosis, I know that it is inconclusive in nature. It is inconclusive in nature because I can have an element of co-dominance, I can have an element of incomplete dominance, I can have an element of complete dominance which is seen to be existing. So I can talk about that particular aspect here, right? Talk about the recognition, talk about the forensics, talk about the paternity diagnosis, the applicative aspect of this. Next. The last question, the synergistic effect of biological and cultural factors in human evolution. Now when you talk about this biological and human evolution and cultural factors, what are you supposed to discuss? You are supposed to talk about the biological and the biocultural aspect. Now if you go back and see 1.4, the first line of 1.4 will be exactly the last line, biological and cultural factors in human evolution. You can cross check in the syllabus. This is the exact line which is picked up. And in that context, all that you will have to discuss is the biological determinism and the cultural determinism. That fundamental dimension has to be discussed. That might be discussed in the context of language, in the context of organic evolution with respect to hominization process. Right? Those perspectives can be discussed in the context. How is the physiology changing? How is the cultural aspects changing? Now, who are the thinkers whom we will refer here? Is there any thinker whom we will refer here in biocultural? Generally, which school of culture talks about biocultural adaptations? It is fundamentally spoken by the neo-evolutionist school. 
in neo evolutionism i see four thinkers one is gv child right julian h stewart leslie alvin white and shollins and service right marshall shollins and elman service right these two give a particular theory now in the context of julian h stewart julian h stewart talks about culture ecology approach right although he talks about an opposite theory although he sees a deviation from roy rapaport's understandings of shambhaga society where he says it is purely ecological or environmental determinism but where julian h stewart says it is cultural ecology approach one dimension the second dimension that you need to observe is in the context of leslie alvin wind he says culture energy approach where he see that culture is resultant of the growth in technology and energy and he gives up or he comes up with a theory called as culturology that is seen with respect to leslie alvin wind the third dimension is with respect to the gv child where he talks about universal evolution and the third or the fourth aspect is shallins and service where they talk about bio cultural approach and there is something called a specific evolution and there is something called a general evolution and both of these dimensions see an interplay of the biological and the cultural factors you can never write an answer without talking about shallins and service understanding of bio cultural approach in this question right so discuss about that dimension which has to be seen they are asking about critical aspect because it is not only the biology which is influencing it is not only the culture which is influencing the third dimension that i see is environment also is seen to be influencing because when i look at anthropology as a subject i see that anthropology is an interplay of three determinisms one is cultural determinism the other one is biological determinism the third one is environmental determinism when i see the interplay of these three that is where i have the social biological and cultural dimension of anthro right so this is a brief understanding of paper 1 we'll